Hi everyone, this is Satyajit Das and today I'm going to cover top 20 Kubernetes commands. So I'm assuming you know a little bit of Kubernetes and if you're absolute beginner, I will put a couple of video links in the description and after which this video will make more sense to you. So let's start. Okay, so the first command which I'm going to cover is uh, kubectl version. So normally if you are going to use Kubernetes, uh, definitely there will be times when you will have some doubts and uh, you will be stuck at certain points. So in those cases, you will be asking it to somebody or posting your question in Stack Overflow. So the first thing you are expected to mention is the version because Kubernetes varies a lot from version to version. So if you just do kubectl version short, it will give you the server version as well as client version okay next is explain so if you do kubectl explain and then that can be followed by any kubernetes object so if i do kubectl explain explain pod it will give more details of a pod so as you can see pod has fields called api version kind metadata spec and status and you can also like nest them so you can do things like kubectl explain pod dot let's say spec and it will it will give some more details about what does a spec mean and what all fields you can give under the spec same thing you can do for deployments as well so kubectl explain deployment and for any field of the deployment let's say i choose status so kubectl explain deployment dot status and you will get to know a bit more details about the status field so you may think why this is important i mean you can also look it up on the website but it's important to know the information based on what you have installed and what you are dealing with rather rather than uh, looking at a generic answer in the websites okay next one i'm going to cover is apply so if you have a yaml file or something similar which you can use to create any kubernetes object then you apply that using the kubectl apply command so i'm assuming you have some knowledge some basic knowledge on kubernetes so here i have i have defined a deployment file and if we look into it it just it just runs a particular image and uh, it has one replica okay so if i do kubectl apply then followed by what file name i give so in this case deployment.yaml and since i had applied it already before it says this deployment is unchanged okay you can do the same for other objects like i have another file for service so i can do kubectl apply then service.yaml and i can see the service is created next command is get so once you have applied you have pods or replica sets or services or deployments running so how are you going to see what all stuff you have so you can do that by doing kubectl get followed by whatever types of objects you want to see so in this case let's say i want to see the pods and here it shows me the pods and how many are ready what's the status and what is the edge of the pod if you just want to see everything then you can do kubectl get all and it will show you literally everything that is there in the current namespace so by default it is default namespace so it shows to me now the pods in the namespace the services the deployments and the replica sets and if you want to look for a particular namespace then you just have to do kubectl get pods then minus n then followed by your namespace name okay next time i want to cover is kubectl describe so if you have some pod running and you want to get some more information about it then that's when you can use the command describe and it is also applicable for other kubernetes objects as well so let's say i do the describe for this particular pod so kubectl describe pod followed by the pod name and if it is running on a particular namespace you have to give the 
name of the namespace in this case it is default namespace so i didn't have to specify so once you describe it it gives full information about that object so in this case for a pod it can give the ip the containers the image and usually if there is any error during while it is running then you can also see those here similarly you can do the same for deployments as well so let's say i do kubectl describe deployment and then it will show you the description of the deployment so in this case i have certain levels certain selectors certain number of replicas so i have one replica here and uh, it also gives you the pod template next command is delete so if you want to delete any particular object you can do that so if i want to delete this pod all i have to do is kubectl delete pod followed by pod name and as you can see the pod gets deleted and because the pod is managed by a replica set which is managed by a deployment that's why another pod is going to get created so if i do kubectl get pods now you can see a new pod and we just got created so if you want to completely delete this you will have to basically delete uh, the underlying deployment next is edit so let's say i want to edit the current deployment so the command goes like this and now it will show you it will basically open the deployment file contents and in my case it's opening in vim which is by default in my command line if you set it up properly you it can automatically open in your um, preferred text editor or it or vs code for example so if i were to edit it let's say i want to instead of having one replica i want to let's say have two replicas so i press i to insert and then change it to two and then escape colon wq now it is edited so if you do kubectl get pods again you can see there are two pods running next is scale so what we did just now using edit uh, the same thing can be done using scale as well so if i want to scale it to let's say three replicas so i can do kubectl scale deployment replicas is equal to three followed by the deployment name okay so now it says the deployment is scaled if i do gives it will get ports i can see one more port is running okay so until now you have learned how to create something how to delete something how to see what's going on now how to understand what a particular kubernetes object means okay so let's say you have had several versions of your deployments and uh, you want to get back to get back to a certain point in history which means you want to roll back to certain previous version so in this case the command to use is rollout so the way you can do it is kubectl rollout history then deployment followed by the deployment name and then you can see what all revisions you have had before okay so right now it's showing only one revision for me but if you have had lots of revisions let's say you have an update on your app and your image has changed and that creates you know a different new sets of pods so in that case you will have let's multiple revisions so if you want to roll back to a particular revision in that case you have to do kubectl rollout undo deployment followed by deployment name to revision is equal to whatever revision number you see here okay so once you do that then you will go back to you will uh, roll back to your previous state okay next command is uh, logs so if you want to look at the logs for a particular pod you can simply do kubectl logs so let's say i have three pods running and I want to look at the logs for this particular pod then you can do kubectl logs followed by just the name of the pod um, currently this pod is not logging anything that's why i'm not seeing anything but yeah if 
if you are logging something then you you will be able to see that next command is exec so if you want to um, ssh into your pod and check some stuff in the pod like how it is running or uh, or if you can do some networking request from the pod or things like that then you can simply exec into the pod so the command is kubectl exec and i'm making it interactive and in a terminal and copy the pod name and i want to open it in a shell so now i have exact into the pod okay now i'm inside the pod so if i do ls i see uh, this is the binary which my application has created which is basically running so nothing else is here so i can execute commands to check how things are going in the pod so let's say if i do top i can see the stats for the pod so what's the cpu usage and what all processes are running things like that and if i press q i'm back to the pod and if i do exit then i'm back to my terminal okay so there is one more command related to this which is uh, copy so if you want to copy a particular file from a pod to your local directory uh, examples of that can be if you want to simply dump some text and you want to see them so you can dump it in your application and just save locally let's say you dump it in a text file and it is saved uh, in a .txt file inside the pod then you can simply copy it from the pod to your local directory so in my case as you saw before there is this file called binary so if i want to simply copy this to my local directory how, how am i going to do that so the command is kubectl cp for copy followed by the pod name and it is simply uh, the file and let's say i want to save it as my binary locally okay so now it has copied so if i do ls i see the binary has been copied locally okay so you can simply copy whatever files you want and open locally okay next command is port forward so let's say you want to run you want to be able to access uh, a pod or a service locally then so usually the pods are accessible from inside a, a cluster so if you're outside of the cluster and you want to access it then you can either expose the pod using a service which is of type node pod or ingress for example but if you just want to do it on development purposes then port forwarding is the option for you so if i do kubectl get services and i have this service running and uh, i simply want to port forward this service so that i can access it locally then what i can do is kubectl port forward then svc slash whatever name i have then i want to be able to access locally in my uh, port let's say 10000 and this will be uh, the corresponding port in the service will also be will be 10000 because the service exposes the port 10000 so okay now it is forwarded so i should be able to access this service from locally which means if i open localhost 10000 then then i can access the pod which is managed by the service okay which is exposed by the service so my pod is a simple http server uh, which just writes this message to the screen and i can see that from locally so the idea is the same even if it is running on uh, some other cluster let's say a google cloud cluster or aws cluster the uh, steps are still the same okay next command is cluster info so kubectl cluster info it gives some information about your cluster basically so you can see master is running here and kube dns is running and you can also do kubectl cluster info dump to uh, get 
way more information about the cluster. Next is auth. So one of the example usages of kubectl auth is basically checking authentication or permission issues. So uh, one example can be kubectl auth can I create deployment? And the answer is yes. So what is I here? I here is the default service account. So you can ask things like, yeah, if you can, if you are able to create deployment or if you are able to delete stuff or apply stuff or list stuff. So all these can be checked by these auth can I commands. So this is useful when you have separate service accounts with different permissions. So you would like to be able to see what all sort of what all permissions you have. So in that case, you can either dig it up in the service account to see what permissions you have, or you can simply execute these sort of commands to see what all things you are able to do. Next is kubectl cordon. So there are three related commands which I'm going to cover, which I'm not going to exactly demo because I'm simply running locally, but uh, I'm going to mention how why it is used. So cordon kubectl cordon followed by a node name. So you may have lots of worker nodes and at certain points you either want to do some sort of maintenance or you simply don't want any other pod to be scheduled in that particular node. So in that case you can do kubectl cordon followed by node name to basically make the node unschedulable. Okay. Um, this is basically mostly done for maintenance purposes. So once you cordon a node no other new port can be scheduled to that node and to undo it you just have to do kubectl uncordon followed by node name okay so if you just cordon things will continue to run in the port as it has been before but it's just simply that no new port will be scheduled and if you want to completely get rid of all the processes running in the node then after doing cordon, you have to do kubectl drain followed by node name. Okay, and that drain will uh, simply get rid of all the processes running inside the node. So usually, when you want to simply completely delete a node, so you do cordon, then drain, then kubectl delete the node. So next one is kubectl taint. So when you taint a node, uh, what it means is basically you attach a particular key value to that node which puts some sort of restrictions on what kind of ports can be scheduled into that node. So if I tent node 1 with this key is equal to key and value is equal to value then any pod which does not have this key value toleration then it can't be scheduled on that node. Okay. So tent is basically used to have certain types of pods to be scheduled in a particular node and there is another concept called node affinity which basically means a pod usually wants to be scheduled in particular types of nodes but that doesn't necessarily mean it can't be scheduled in other nodes as well okay so these are all the commands i had to cover and uh, i'm sure there are many other commands as well but these are the top 20 commands which you will be most likely be using more often than most other commands and if you have any suggestions or on any other commands then feel free to let me know in the description and if you find any mistake then also feel free to point it out if you like this video then feel free to subscribe and give it a like thanks cheers